Hello, my beautiful people. This is Anna Sheriff again. So today I would like for us to talk on a topic that I've already gone live with on Facebook. The burden of infertility, the problem of childlessness in a marriage. Now we are learning that infertility is becoming a global health concern. However, it's been a concern in our African culture for a very long time. Growing up, we saw women suffer. Women who were cast away, women who were castigated, women who were frowned at, who were shunned in their own community, especially with those modern laws, in laws. Even the husbands sometimes kicked their women out because they were unable to, to give birth to a baby. A culture that is less forgiving of a woman who is unable to bear children in their marriage. Failing to realize most often is not even the woman's fault. It's the fault of the men. Now we are learning about the low sperm count. A medical concern. A medical issue that some men has. However, we all know how our African tradition is. Where some men will not even come to terms that they have a problem. If you're not, if you're married for over a year and not having a child, it's good to seek medical attention. But before we go into that, I would like to define what um, infertility is. According to Sarah Houdin, um, a clinical definition of infertility provided by the World Health Organization is a disease of the reproductive system defined by the failure to achieve a clinical pregnancy after 12 months or more of regular unprotected sexual intercourse. And we all know the basic definition is you are not able to have a child. A woman not able for bone picking. And because of that, we African women, especially we women, now we're so critical about we come to women, we will curse them, we will begin to harass them, we will begin to tell them what, we will even call them witch. Some of them are model law there. No, no, they even accept it. a boy picking and get problem. When a boy picking and go be the one who's not able for born picking because of this low sperm count because they're not able for give the woman belly. But when I go blame on a daughter law there. But we want for long no. Most times, not on a daughter law get the problem. Now, when a boy picking and say, say, get the problem because they're not able for, for get a woman they have belly because they get medical problem called low sperm count. And do you know how painful that is? You know, some environment, uh, environmental concerns, you know, are associated to the risk of infertility. So is genetics. And so is uh, infectious diseases. You know, while infertility can affect both men and women, however, the majority focus goes to the women. They focus more attention on the women than the men. But I came across one uh, research that actually focused on men. It is by the reproductive biology and endocrinology. It's titled A Unique View on Male Infertility Around the Globe. Yes, my beautiful people. Men has this issue too. It is not always the woman's fault. In this research, it states that infertility affects an estimated 51% of couples globally, amounting to 485 million couples see that 48.5 million couples are affected globally males are found to be solely solely responsible for 20 to 30 percent of infertility cases and and contribute to 50 percent of cases overall so do you see the percentage 50 percent of men contribute to infertility in, in, their, in their marriages. However, the woman is always blamed for not having children. A woman who always who is always cast out because she's unable to bear children, which is something that is actually out of her control. A woman who is unable to bear children due to the, 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 the low sperm count in her husband. According to the Mayo Clinic, low sperm count means that the fluid you ejaculate during an orgasm contains fewer sperm than normal. Exactly. 
Meaning you are not able to give and get any woman pregnant. It further states your sperm count is considered lower than normal if you have fewer than 15 million sperm per milliliter of semen. Yes, less than 15 million sperm per milliliter. You're unable to, to, to get your wife pregnant. This research further states, having a low sperm count decreases the odds that one of your sperm will be able to fertilize your partner's eggs, resulting into pregnancy. So if your sperm is unable to fertilize your wife's egg, how is she supposed to have these babies that a woman is so uh, um, harassed to have? A woman is so cast away. Uh, the, uh, the society punish women. When most of the time it is the husband's fault. So if your egg is not able, if, if your sperm is not able to fertilize her egg, how is she supposed to have these babies? It's also state that um, the main sign of a low sperm count is the inability to conceive a child. So the low sperm count is actually the inability as well, which co contribute to infertility of having children. So while I was doing this research, I came across the, 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 the term um, uh, primary and secondary uh, uh, infertility, where the secondary is where a woman is able to be a one child. However, she's unable to carry another live birth due to multiple miscarriages. And the primary one is when a woman has never ever had a, a pregnancy or even had a live birth pregnancy or carry a child. Most women fall under the secondary category. I have one of my sister who before she had a son, she went through multiple miscarriages. And after her son, she continued to have multiple miscarriages. So she actually falls under the category of this, the, the secondary infertility. I know another friend of mine who continued to have multiple miscarriages but she never had a child now you have some women or some people or our society who continue to ask these women when are you going to have a child when are you going to have another child even though god has blessed you with one years back where i used to work my people after having my my son this lady that i used to work with always always bothered me of having another child she continued to pest me. Hannah, when are you going to have another child? Oh, your, your son is older now. You are due to have another baby. Knowing very well that my husband had passed away. Knowing very well that I wasn't dating anyone. But she continued to ask me. So one day, my beautiful people, God helped me. The moment she said it, I was so tired and fed up. I just told her right there in her face. I said, why don't you borrow me your husband for one night? Because I know your husband is very caring and he will take care of this baby you are so desperate for me to have. That is when she went into a frenzy. Oh, Hannah, you are crazy. You are crazy. Oh, yeah, now I'm crazy, all right. Yes, I'm crazy because she want, she, because I asked her to borrow me a husband. I know for sure no woman in their right mind want to share their husband. No woman who is married to one man will want to share their husband with somebody else. There is an exception, though. An exception to the women who actually marry a man with multiple wives. I give kudos to those women. I don't know how they are able to go to handle that type of marriages. Anyway, but it is their choice. But those women who marry one man, a man, they are just the only wife to that man. I believe they never want to share their husband. So to single women whose uh, uh, friends, neighbors, families continue to ask you to have a child when God has already blessed you with one without asking your story, ask them to borrow you their husband. They will never ever ask you, <laughs> ask you again. That woman told me I was crazy. Now I was crazy. Anyway, another issue I would like to address in this um, infertility issue that we go through in Africa is after God has blessed you with that one child or God has blessed you with two different children, if they are females, they continue, the society will continue to ask you to go have boy child as if a boy child will never amount to anything. I mean, a girl child will never amount to anything as if a girl child is unable to do anything for their parent as if a girl child means nothing. 
You know, they, 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 we get this thing. They have this thing where it says, before you give back to the president, give back to the president's wife. We know the power of a woman. We all know when the president becomes a president, who is in the White House, who is in the State House, it is the, the, the wife's parent. You know, so you see, so for this thing that every day is having a boy child, I know this few men who continue to suffer their wives just because they want to have a boy child. I know one actually who, who I believe, if I'm not mistaken, already have four or five girls now, but he still want a boy child. What is that about this boy child? And this thing became so bad in India where I read uh, 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 the government has to pass a law because when a woman gets pregnant, they do a sonogram, they ask the woman to, to abort the baby if it's a female child. If we continue to abort the female child of this era, of this generation, and we are getting older, our generation is getting older, who is going to continue to have this boy child that society is so desperate to have? Failing to realize we need both men and women to produce these boy children anyway or to produce the girl child. But you actually need the female to actually give birth to the boy child. So who is going to give it to you, society, when you continue to abort them? That is my issue. So according to this research, if you are having an issue of low sperm count, if you have any symptoms... It says low sperm count might include problem with sexual function, for example, low sex drive or difficulty maintaining an erection, pain, swelling, and a lump in the testicle area, decreased fascia or body hair, or other signs of chromosome or hormone uh, abnormalities. Yes. Uh, 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 also, it says... If you're having this issue, see a doctor, seek medical attention. If you have all these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, signs and symptoms following um, like uh, uh, the erection or ejaculation, ejaculation problems, low sex drive or other problems with sexual functions, pain, discomfort, a lump or swelling in the testicle area, a history of testicle prostate or sexual problems, or growing testicle, penis, or scrotum surgery. Seek medical attention. I believe both parties need to seek medical attention just to be clear that it is not a woman's fault or the man's fault. So please, my beautiful brothers and sisters out there, seek medical attention if you are having this particular issue in your marriage. Instead of casting your wife away, instead of driving them out of the house, instead of calling them witchcraft, instead of telling them they ate their own babies, instead of telling them they are heartless, instead of telling, asking them so many questions without asking their stories, seek medical attention. Thank you everyone for watching. May God continue to bless us. And for those who have yet to have babies in their marriages, I pray that the God Almighty we bless you with beautiful, beautiful children in your homes because children are a gift from God and we should cherish them. I pray that God bless you all. May you guys continue to be happy in your marriages. Those of us who are single, we're going to continue to drink our single juice and then be happy. Thank you, everyone. Please don't forget to follow me on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for watching.